night, guys. It is a lovely, almost summer night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here it is Tuesday night, June 15th, or is it 16th, 2021 already? June 15th, 2021, halfway through June, I hear some rumor that it is uh, 120 degrees in Phoenix and 110 in Montana. We had a high of 66 in Ithaca, New York, heading into the 40s tonight. So the little dog and I need to go find a heater. So, but we're not here to talk about global, well, kind of here to talk about global warming because we're here to talk about the O word, and obviously uh, we're not going to the mainstream media to uh, talk about the O word. We're going to go right here uh, to the to the comments page. This fellow I have never heard of before, Stephen Salmony, has sent me. Uh, I'm a little unclear, Stephen. It, it's uh, I guess Stephen just wrote this himself. Uh, Stephen Earl Salmony, Ph.D. I'm not sure what an M.P.A. is, brother, but uh, Stephen has an essay to share with us. So since I've never heard of this man, but I like what he has to say, so we're going to have Stephen Salmony give us the big picture and then uh, we're going to let Andy the gardener uh, encapsulate what Stephen said. And um, if I have time, we're going to go over and listen to some Caitlin Johnstone to close out if the camera doesn't go up. So take it away. Stephen Salmony, welcome to Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> Human population activity the primary factor that has precipitated a climate emergency, biodiversity loss, and environmental pollution on our watch. Homo sapiens is a creature of Earth not separate from the natural world, just as it is for other species within the web of life on Earth. Food is a fundamental basis of life for the human species. I will be getting some of the fundamental food here after this video. There are other factors that help sustain life. Yeah, yeah, like air and water, I guess. But food is a root cause of the growth of all species. Population growth of a species can become a biological problem. In the case of Homo sapiens, a self-reinforcing feedback loop has been established in the food population relationship because other natural limiting factors to the unbridled growth of human population numbers have been eliminated by human ingenuity, read sanitation and medical technology, and Stephen, I would add this nitrogen fertilizer, the unheralded one. Uh, nitrogen fertilizer has done more, uh, what was that, the Bosch? Anyway, look that up and get back with us. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> humans are an exceptional species in many ways, but not in terms of population dynamics. Hence, the recent explosion of absolute global human population numbers that are primarily caused by spectacular annual increases in the human food supply is derived from enhanced food production and distribution capabilities. Other species cannot produce food beyond that provided by the natural world, or in Sancho Panza's case, that provided by humans. You would starve to death if you had to live on the amount of chippies you catch every day. The conundrum. Here is the conundrum. Increasing food production and distribution capabilities continuously, specifically 
for the purpose of meeting the needs of a growing human population has also fueled a population explosion. <clears throat> yes, it has. With each passing year, more people are being fed, yet more people are going hungry. I know you don't like nighttime rants, that you're just going to have to deal with it because we've been working too hard today. <clears throat> Regardless of what we believe because it is politically convenient, economically expedient, socially correct, religiously tolerated, and or culturally syntonic to do so, we are currently confronted with an undeniable biological problem that is explained in uncontested ecological science of human population dynamics. A new biological understanding is emerging from ongoing research that replaces a biologically implausible, ideologically driven, logical contrivance stated simply. As is the case with other species, food is the independent, not the dependent variable in the relationship between food and population numbers. It is food availability that drives population increases, and it is that population growth which fuels the false perception, the misleading impression, the fatally flawed conception that food production needs to be increased to meet the needs of a growing population. Year after year, while food production is increased, leading to global human population number increases, hundreds of millions in the human family continue to go hungry. Why are those people not getting fed? And why is it that future generations may never be fed? We are increasing the number of hungry people as we feed more people. World hunger grows annually despite abundant total food harvest. Starvation has not been remedied by boosting food production, increasing food production to eliminate malnourishment, hunger, and starvation has not been a solution. <clears throat> uh, then he, he has all sorts of, th this is all, he, he puts all his footnotes and everything. You can find this essay on the comments to the Gerardo Ceballos uh, interview. This is his uh, response to that interview. He has all of these, uh, all of these uh, footnotes, you know, that you can go look at. Uh, what is becoming evidence is that the overproduction, overconsumption, and overpopulation activities of the human species are occurring synergistically and simultaneously threatening life as we know it. The spectacular increases of these distinctly human overgrowth, overshoot activities are causing the mass extirpation of Earth's biodiversity, the relentless dissipation of its limited resources, and the unbridled degradation of its environs, which, when taken together, present a clear and immediate threat to a healthy future for children everywhere and coming generations. The enormous, unbridled increase in the overall magnitude of the human population in our time on a planet with the size, composition, and ecology of Earth has precipitated a growing number of deleterious circumstances, including environmental pollution, biodiversity loss, ecological disruption, and climate destabilization. 
global human activity is threatening the future of life as we know it and the planet as a fit place for human habitation. After thousands of years of stable human population numbers, the past 225 years have seen total population increases in size from 1 to 8 billion. How are humans going to limit sensibly and effectively the current unbridled growth of their population numbers without beginning to limit increases only in the total production of food for human consumption. Alternatives to this step, e.g. educational economic opportunities for females, how about contraception for males and females, and do not forget my particular choice, voluntary sterilization represent necessary goals to be achieved. That is certain. But these and other helpful interventions by themselves will prove insufficient to stabilize human population numbers because human beings will continue to live or die primarily as a function of food supply. The science of human population dynamics makes one thing clear. The United Nations mantra, food production must be increased annually to meet the needs of a growing population, is a widely shared and consensually validated mistake of colossal proportions. This mantra is not an expression derived from language of science. By recognizing how the mistake is generated out of the realm of the preternatural, we can replace it with a more accurate understanding of a condition of being human, i.e., population dynamics of Homo sapiens, and a more fulsome appreciation of the way the world we inhabit works, with humans now visibly disclosed as an integral part of the web of life. If ever the human community is sensibly and meaningfully able to restrain the recent bacteria-like growth of human population numbers, limiting increases in total food production for human consumption will need to be a part of any program of action. Good luck. If food harvests that sustain the lives of 8 billion people are simultaneously and more fairly redistributed so that the human family is provided sustenance along with universal, free, safe, accessible, voluntary contraception and sterilization, such steps in a comprehensive program of action might well lead toward population stabilization and the reduction of human suffering associated with the insufficient availability of food. Now that was a mouthful and again you can find those comments and all of the associated references and all of that uh, in the comments to the Gerardo. Uh, but we're going to let Andy the Gardener, uh, in his own inimitable way, Andy the Gardener, I think, is saying the same thing that, uh, I'm sorry, I already forgot your name, brother. Was it Stephen? I I anyway, uh, we're going to listen to Andy the Gardener kind of encapsulate what we just heard. I'm thinking it's pretty much sort of along the lines. Andy the Gardener, will you explain it? to us, you know, this was says, uh, referring to this comment about them electrocuting fish to save them. 
save the fish threatened by humans by electrocuting them and putting them in the freezer. Call me cynical, but that is a pretty odd way to save wildlife. Wouldn't want any wildlife endangered by the growing human population going to waste if they can feed the growing human population instead. Methinks this is akin to fanning the flames. Anyway, I said growing like a normie would, like the growth is the only thing that matters. It's actually the size of the human population that is the true core horror. Yes, regardless of any growth on top, they cheer the random occurrence of growth rate slowing like they did something to make it happen, like it is a savior, ignoring the actual numerical growth, let alone the scale of the base population it's growing from. There is no salvation here, and the humans can, make, can take no credit for proactively regulating themselves to make the growth rate slow because the normie cancer human abhors a reduction in the growth rate. Normie cancer human is, and always will be, several stages away from understanding the true predicament. In any way, I was going to share Alien Song from Caitlin Johnstone, but all of this talk about food has made me hungry, and uh, I have a big pot of spaghetti on the stove that I need to get to, and a little dog wants to go to bed, so maybe we will hear from Caitlin tomorrow. Get out there and enjoy all the food you can while you still can. Yes, little dog. I know it. He said, Bob, I can't stand these late night rants. Bye, guys.